Alice Fauzi, Chris Ellison, and Ponathan Joel. Jonathan, do y'all have a choice? I was really hoping that this wouldn't be brought up today. When did the thought of leaving start popping into your mind? I don't know if you can actually say. The reunion you've all been waiting for. This is your daily catch up. Who? Who are they? NOC. <laughs> <laughs> So you may or may not notice a few familiar faces around me right now. You've seen them play games, you've seen them travel, you've seen them try lots and lots and lots of things. They're the OG cast members of the Smart Local. Welcome to the show, Joyce, Fauzi, Chris, Alison, and Ponathan Joe! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were included. Yeah, that's right. And you may have also seen the Deeps. Yeah, you that's right. Zula, what the hell? I've been on one episode of Zula. So <laughs> it's been a while since most of you left. Uh, TSL and in the spirit of friendship and Mother's Day which is upcoming we've gathered you guys here for a little reunion family reunion wait who's your mother? yeah what? I was confused no I just want to give a shout what? out to all mothers <laughs> 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 to Brian Chu our original mother <laughs> <laughs> shout out <laughs> boss I man. didn't know we're at that part of the episode <laughs> <laughs> so fast. I mean everybody kind of knows where the both of you are at now yeah. so maybe yeah. Chris can start what did you do immediately after you left TSL and where are you at now? Right, so after I left TSL, I went into a travel company Ooh. right before COVID hit. Oh. So perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing. After many other steps in between, I am at a quite a big media company Ooh. where I am actually working with sales and editorial teams to mm. kind of make them be friends. Search oh. is LinkedIn, search is LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just search on LinkedIn, you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> My LinkedIn is not updated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So you're hearing it here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about you, Fauzi? So I haven't left that long ago. I left uh, maybe about nine months ago. Uh, One pregnancy uh, ago. Exactly. Shout out to all mothers. <laughs> oh, happy mothers. <laughs> Bye. I have gone completely freelance now. So um, doing a couple of shows here and there, mm. uh, doing my own content. Uh, doing a bit of consulting as well. Okay, we'll hear more about that later. Next up, Joyce. I left in 2021. So actually right now I'm doing uh, freelance writing and I'm also training to be a psychotherapist. Ooh. So that's what I've been up to. So you're going to clinical psych? Uh, not clinical psych, counselling. I'm not sure the difference, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe more on that later too. Shout out to mental health. <laughs> <laughs> and mothers who have good mental health. <laughs> Let's go down the line, right? And then I want you all to share your first impression of each other when you all first oh joined wow. me as well. <laughs> long hair. Oh. She had long hair? Yeah. 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 And she had bangs, remember? And yes, I remember. When I first joined. And weird puzzle games that she bring to you that occasionally. I <laughs> Wait, who was the first to join TSL? Chris, Chris right? Chris. Employee then, number one. Oh my god, you're really number is one. Is this order law? Chris, me, Joyce. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. Then the knees, Ellie. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the reverse. Okay. So what? Okay. So what was your first impression of him? Chris. Ah. Chris interviewed me, ma. Huh? <laughs> so I remember the interview. <laughs> the thing is, my interview was very interesting because it was Brian, the boss. It was Chris and Cheryl, who was oh. actually an intern. And huh? my first impression was I was most afraid of Cheryl, the intern. Because she had huh? such a stoic face that I felt like she was the boss. <laughs> then the other two, I was like, okay, seems like nice people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so his first impression is seems like nice people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I didn't really have much of an impression in a sense because I was just like breaking it, right? It's an interview. And that was like my first interview uh, for a job after I graduated from university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Do you I have was to like, dance or sing? No la! I, I was had into. To, what? Yeah. what are you interviewing for? No, John Paul was in my interview with oh Brian. My oh, my oh, my <laughs> no, then at that point of time, there was this very famous song, you know, the last night, I think it was like a yes, trending yes, song. Yes, yes, yes. So they, they, they heard I was a dancer, then they were like, oh my god, like, can you create a dance to go viral in Singapore? Who is then, they? Who is they? No, Brian, Brian. They all. <laughs> then John, John, John Paul was just the whole interview, he just looked at me stoically like this. Then I, I misinterpreted to I miss You miss what? I misinterpreted <laughs> Okay, then I read the subtitles for this part. I thought they meant uh. do the dance but in a Singapore context. Oh. But they meant create a new dance. So they played the song, then I just did this, but then I did like the national thing. <laughs> <laughs> like the pledge. That's so stressful. Yeah, so I did it right. Then after the interview I was like, I'm not gonna get this job. Like it was so bad, like the reaction was like a bit like off. Then after that, John Paul called me, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Who interviewed me? Brian interviewed me. Only? 
I think so, eh. Not Chris, eh? No, eh. Yeah, actually, no, I didn't interview Joyce. I don't have a single memory of this interview. That's, <laughs> that's a very funny story because I actually found an article of yours online. Mm. Mm. And I I brought the article to Brian. I was like, this, this writer is very good. Oh. And then Brian oh, wow. was like, she's really joining us. Wow. wow. Oh, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> Meanwhile, my impression of you, right, is... You offered me this like Reese buttercup thing. Oh my god. Because he went to the office pantry at the back, right? Uh. Then he came out. Then he was kind of like chancing on the way back. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. Me. 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 Yeah. Then he spotted me. Then he's like, Do you want one? <laughs> <laughs> then I said, No, I'm waiting for an interview. Then, then he, he said, uh, Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so crisp. It's so yeah, funny. Yeah, like the snack changes from year to year. <laughs> but then, like, the whole like routine. Yeah. <laughs> Every time there's a new person <laughs> in, then you can pick a new snack. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. And then my first impression of Fauzi was. Uh, I think I had to go over and talk to you. I mm. can't remember if you were wearing a hat or not. Like, you told me specific. that you were studying theatre. I was, yeah. But last time you were scary, I feel. That's what everybody said about me though. No, no, the first day of my internship, I walked in, right? And then his his um screen only cover just nice he, <laughs> until his nose. So he li- he just side eye me like that. And then he go back to working. The thing that, is, I don't with remember your this. little unicorn at the side. Then I was like, I thought, I thought this guy's supposed to be like friendly. <laughs> then after you, the next person I had to see is John Paul. Exactly. Ball. Then he, I thought he'll be like, hello, welcome to your first day. He just turned and he like, uh, just sit over there. Then I was like... <laughs> Wow. Nice. Actually, I hear that a lot. Like, John's very different off, off screen from on screen. Right, no, but right, so right. in preparation for this episode, I went to dig up a lot of old videos, right? And then I heard John's voice. I mean, number one, he have hair. Then <laughs> number two, his voice is so high pitched, right? It's like, uh, okay, Joyce, you go in first, you go in first. <laughs> I sent her the Japan video. Oh, oh. oh my god, then, Japan! Yeah, then, then, he had, <laughs> then he had to film you, like, you know, we like going through like this, like, very dark, like, Kowloon City kind of thing. Uh-huh. Then John had to, like, voice like oh my god where are we going but then it was like a super high pitch like oh my he's god. like he purposely one la, no ah, yeah, yeah yeah he purposely oh, oh. purposely one ah. yeah la, no yeah, the first did. video he never talked at all the kuti kuti one right? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 the whole time just like <laughs> <laughs> that's all I did eh. it's Jonathan's first video wow is it yeah. oh my god I yeah. suddenly have an intrusive memory <laughs> <laughs> please go for it go for it remember when y'all did the LTA thing oh, <laughs> oh what is that he had to be a baby why you bring it up you have to be what a baby. Wait, wait, okay. Where, where's the video? Okay. Is it we, online? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So we basically <laughs> recreated the the <laughs> LTA, the <laughs> back down Benny, oh. the app, you know, the app. Okay, okay, okay. Like frame for frame, we try to recreate it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Please is it on YouTube? Are you also inside? Yeah. <laughs> his face is photoshopped to a baby. He it wasn't photoshopped. He was physically there. He was physically there. He was physically there in a towel. LTA liked it so much that she sent us like a, a, oh, yeah. a gift or something. You all have a career. few like comedy videos together that are quite memorable. Honestly, yeah, Including just... this one where oh, John <laughs> has long hair. Hey. What's what this? Y'all were doing a pillow talk parody. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> you had like a beard. You had <laughs> you, were, you were Zane, you were Zane. Yeah. The worst part of that shoot was the mayonnaise. Oh, oh, the mayo drip on his face. Yes! But this is a PG show, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so just now, we also did bring up another core memory from TSL, which is Join the Turn. Oh. So, okay. uh, it, it came okay. down. Uh. I haven't asked my question. Oh, Do y'all so have far, a choice? Oh. Do we have a choice? Like, was it something that was talked talk mm. through with the both of you, right, before your, the editor, like, made it a thing, you know? Yeah, I really appreciate this question, eh. Thank because you. Of, <laughs> I've never been asked this question before. Yeah, see, just Do now you remember how it was created? I don't remember. I think the viewers created it. No, it was actually the editor that created it. If I'm not wrong, like, if I'm not wrong, the, the intention was they pair us together, then, right, they will just force the couple edits out. So we... It, honestly, right, in yeah. reality, right, we never do anything. Right? I just look at her waiting for her to re- re- say something or what, right? Because at that point, I still don't, I couldn't speak, right? Then, <laughs> then they were just That's editing so to look like I look at her romantically. You know what I mean? Uh, then, then the rose better for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah <and> Korean <laughs> drama music. <somehow. laughs> then from that point on, then it just kept happening. Or the, the comments were responding to it very well. Yeah. Well, this is brand new information to me. I didn't know that it's premeditated. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that it was viewers, uh, like the oh, they viewers. Shipping. Yeah, yeah, shipping. Shipping. Right, right, right. So you just went along with it. Yeah, because you know what, we got to travel to a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the travels are what I remember of my time there. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So really, like, it's worth it, lah. Even though I can't remember if we had a choice, but like, 
no regrets. It was fun. Mm. Yeah. I Some unlocked something else. Someone oh, wow, what is this? <laughs> I unlocked something else. Uh, uh. She's a startup. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> oh! <laughs> just just no, I want to put it out there, right? That was fun. Then I sacrificed myself, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you also oh, saying, no, I was really also... hoping that this wouldn't be brought up today. <laughs> oh, it's good because we can clarify. That's why Obi Marco. That's a lie. I can screenshot or check. I <laughs> totally didn't yeah. cross my mind. Oh my no, God. but I have to say that we did it for a good cause, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I see. What's the cause? We agreed to do that, right? Yeah. So that they were the show and... <laughs> Yeah. Oh. So, that the, 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 so that the team that was was handling it can, can, can stop la. But uh, wait, why is the theory? I, I don't know, <laughs> I stress, <laughs> I'm remembering the whole thing. Yeah, it should be like Game of Thrones season <laughs> 8 because the uh, end was just so weird. You guys just were... What are you Game of Thrones season. <laughs> when you all act together, right? Was it awkward? It was damn awkward. Yeah, yeah, like, cannot even act. It's not even acting. Yeah, it's not even acting. with Chinese He's looking out. Out. Yeah. You know what's the most awkward part, right? There's... Okay, I don't want to say because I scared the grand. The whole thing. Is it whole hand? Damn no, no, no. I don't know. Jay Chow, the Jay Chow song. Wow, they want really, yeah. Uh, wow. Gonna force, yeah. Yeah. Is it the badminton? No, it's the part where we had to sit at the fountain. Wow, I then, know. like. I don't, what fountain? Uh, okay, that's why it's good that you're. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most awkward one for me. Um, and to make things worse, right, there was one. Chinese New Year celebration where my cousins pulled out that video oh. in front of the oh extended family. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why you're going to therapy? Wow, shit. You know where I drew the line? It was when like they suggested that they sell us as a couple on a red card so that we can get clients like like jewelry clients. Then I'm like, oh f- that. <laughs> <laughs> know us <laughs> like, like obviously none yeah. of us will agree to that like, yeah, it's like the business yeah. dilemma we both know we will say no right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where we drew the line I guess uh, no but did that require you all to say post on your personal Instagrams or it's like just a no of YouTube? course of course oh. like to sell us as talents but oh. like a two in one sort of thing mm. yeah Ooh. I'm also a bit curious, right? Because, I mean, when you think about places like the Smart Local, it's genuinely a fun place to work. And then especially a lot of people, you go in around the same age, right? So then you make a lot of real friends there. Uh. So I'm wondering, like, when did the thought of leaving, right, start popping into Ooh. your mind? Ooh. Okay, okay. Y'all say first. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. I think I had thoughts of leaving twice during my time at TSL. So one was, I think, around the, the midpoint. It's just the feeling that like it's the same thing over and over again already. So then I was a bit like, I don't know what I want to do. And then maybe I can go explore something else already. But, but then I felt like there was a lot of things that I needed to, how do I say? Uh, like live in good hands before I can move on. Mm. And then that apparently kept me around for another maybe one one plus years or so. Yeah. Then towards the, all the way towards the end already that I was starting to feel like very, very burnt out. Mm. Then at that point that I decided, that, okay, la, I, I actually took a one month sabbatical or something like that to decide. Then when I came back, then I really felt like, wow, I cannot come back to this. Then that's when I decided to leave. It's quite curious for me because uh, around the period where I joined, you actually started this crazy like upload schedule where I think it was like every day you wanted to upload something. Then that's, <laughs> that was when you all did the, you know, the MRT station. Then after that, slowly it fell off. Then it become three times a week. <laughs> yeah, then like you know what happened? Did. He passed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so he left it in good hands. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> for Ellison, right, was him leaving like kind of a trigger for you also? Um, a little bit, but as in, but not like cause of his presence, but more <laughs> 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 because of the work. No, no, as in, because I, I know that we'll be friends after work. Like it doesn't matter about the friendship thing. I personally, at that point of time, didn't really like to be in a managerial or leadership position. I mean, now a bit the same, but <laughs> at that time, I feel like. I was quite stressed out by it because there were things going in my life like because my mom passed in oh. that same year. So I felt like it was a lot to take in. Like I didn't have the right mental capacity to take on the role that was passed on to me. So as I tried for a bit. That's why in the end, I felt like I couldn't take it up. Hence, I left for a break. So both of you all left without a backup plan in a sense. Like without another job in mind. Yeah. You all just left and wanted to take a break. I think I, I think gave so, my yeah. I gave myself a year yeah. off la, mm. to go and just explore and do things that I wanted to do, travel. Then lucky, yeah, because 2019 I travel like one dog, right? Then 2020 kinda the COVID that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really no, you know, really no one, things, one year yeah. we go, go on a lot of trips together. Yeah, la, that year la, 2019. La. Like we Is go it? New York, then we go ah, Japan, ah. then we like ah. blah, 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 then 
<laughs> they suddenly cannot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on that note, I think it's a good point for me to bring up our sponsors for today's episode, which is NTUC's <laughs> Employment and Employability Institute, also known as E2I. We actually did a previous episode in collaboration with them as well, where we actually got to speak to a career coach. Mm. And one thing that she mentioned was that something very important to consider before you make a career change, right, is you need to be very clear about your <laughs> reasons for wanting to leave. And then you need to think about your financial mm. readiness. You need to think about whether you have transferable skills or be able to identify skill gaps. And then, like, whether there is support from family, friends, family or friends or, like, other people such as career coaches, right, to help you navigate through this period of time. Wait, oh, like, wow. in this, this context, is, like, leaving any job or a career mm. switch? Both, actually. It's because even if you move to a different wow. company, right, like, now, like, when I think about my role in this company, if I want to, say, move to an MNC or go in-house and all that, right, I don't think that there's a direct job match for me. I so see. when I find, right, then it's like, for example, now I'm a content strategist, then after I go out there, then I become like a producer, which might lean a lot more towards like organizational side of things mm-hmm. versus like getting to ideate for campaigns and then uh, executing and then also editing, you know, which is the mm. creative aspect that I enjoy more also. I don't think Brian even remembers this, but when I first joined, right, I was deep broke. For the very first month, I actually asked for an advance. Were you fresh oh. out of uni? Yes. Okay. So I was like very, very in debt to him from the very mm. start. So I always had this at the back of my mind where I was like, I will only leave if he asked me to leave. But there came a point where I was there for six years already and I was like, I'm not doing m- more than what I could. I think because at that point, so you were in editorial for most of your TSL life, right? And then you moved up to become group editor, including MSN. So then it did come to a point where it's like, what's next for you? I was so comfortable. I was so comfortable that there was this uh, plan that Brian had where he wanted to, I don't know if you actually say, hide my position, send me somewhere for an internship, just so that I can work under somebody else. Like undercover because boss? Under what? Undercover, undercover boss. boss. No, 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 not oh like that. Oh my god, it's so undercover that it is my first time hearing it. Yeah, I never heard yeah. this before. No, it was a, it was a, a plan that we, we actually discussed because one of the issues that he had with me as an employee is that I've never worked under somebody else before. Oh. I've always been the manager, but I've never... number one. Yeah. Mm. We were discussing going to Japan for a while because nobody knew who I was there. Oh god, Singapore so was very fun. hard because it was like high profile. Oh. But you, how you write in Japanese? It <laughs> have to be English lah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but it never happened lah, so... What a way to solve stagnation. <laughs> <laughs> Usually people send you for causes. Yeah. But then you know, this one ship you over to Japan to be... Oh, well. Yeah, never happened, so it's fine. Okay, so according to order of leaving, yeah. Joyce. Yeah, that's me. Uh, <laughs> and when I joined, I did ask myself how long I plan to stay here. Mm. And I didn't have an answer. I just told myself that I will know when it's time to leave. And then things got so fun that... Time just flew by very quickly. Mm. Suddenly, it's like you're three years in. This is not a good practice, but I don't think I've ever even checked if like my employer paid me once. <laughs> 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 I've never checked if like, oh, the CPF was contributed, blah, blah, blah. And then came 2018. And this was also when I went for my first sabbatical. At the point of time, I was very burnt out. I thought I was ready to leave. But for some reason, during that four-month sabbatical in four 2019, months? Yeah, yeah, four months. Yeah. Like, y'all, I also travel like dog in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and then, during that time, I realised that, oh, I actually miss work. Maybe oh. I don't want to quit after all. And then mm. I went back, I had all these ideas of what I wanted to do. Mm. Then I realised that, like, actually all this time, I've never really asked myself what I wanted in a career. Right. And I have just been, like, going with the flow and relying on, a lot on very extrinsic motivation, mm. like having friends, getting mm. to go for trips, mm. like getting perks like this. So during COVID, I mean, it's a cliche, but when I really took stock of what I wanted and what's next for me, it seemed like what's next for me would be a business role. Brian actually sounded out the option of doing an MBA and then coming back to TSL. But when I looked at the MBA curriculum, I thought like none of this interests me, like not a single module interests me. Mm. And then that was also when I started looking at like, what are some other masters that people can take? Mm. And then I realised that I was so much more drawn to this area. This uh, area is in psychology. Yeah, I didn't act on it then. I went on to uh, continue pursuing a career in media for another eight months. I think it's also interesting because like in such a young company, right? Like a lot of times like the role can be adapted to what you are interested in or your shifting interest. And I think Fauzi can probably relate the yes. most to that, right? Mm. So how did that decision then build up to you realising that actually this is not the place oh, for yeah. you anymore. Damn. Uh, my time in TSL was very colourful because I did so many different things. I felt like every couple of years I did something different. But yeah, uh, I think Alison knows this. Is the fact is throughout my entire time, I always talk about leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, always I was, to bring it. It. I was like <laughs> waiting. 
so there was one time when I just converted to yeah, full time yeah, yeah. in 2017, like January 2017. <laughs> then my it was my first time going with Fauzi and I don't know, he was a bit emotional. Yeah. Then he was like, I'm going to write my letter and throw it on the table tomorrow. Oh <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, huh, why? Then I was like, like a bit trying to like convince him to like, okay, don't do anything rash. Like what, what if you don't throw tomorrow? Like, you know, you wait on it. <laughs> then I was like, no, I'm going to throw I'm going to throw my letter. <laughs> <laughs> drama, eh, yeah, then we stayed there. Was still studying theatre at that point? I don't know, but we stayed there from like 7 to 10 pm talking yeah. about this letter. Yes. But the next day, then suddenly, you are okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was like maybe a client or something that made you a bit emotional. And yeah. then you were just like a bit like, I'm going to stop this. Every year after that, I would joke with Fauzi. Eh? Yeah. Where's the letter? Oh, Fauzi never do the four out of five items. on the. Yeah. Wait! Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think why or uh, how I came to decide to leave was that I think uh, the year prior, so 2022, I did take uh, a bit of a sabbatical mm. uh, to do a couple of things. All of y'all did sabbaticals. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think he should stop letting people go <laughs> sabbatical. That's, that's, the, that's the running thing, actually. <laughs> the, Brian's always afraid of like letting people go on sabbaticals because he's afraid that they will leave after. And the Which trend is... Very is understandable. The trend is well. yes. Yes. <laughs> you got no sabbatical? No. No, never. Okay. Uh. A silent a ninja. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, Somehow that's worse though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like 2022, I wanted to go back into the theatre space. And then the opportunity for me to be in a musical came up. Was it the Lee Kuan Yew one? Yes. yes. Great. I watched it. Yeah, Lee yeah, Do. yeah. So that opportunity came up. And during that period of time, I also did go to New York on a program. Like It's a bit like a career program. Mm to kind of uh, work with mentors in New York City. Uh, so all these mentors in New York City, they really helped me open my eyes and think like, hey, actually, you are m more capable than you, you think you are. I think mm. for the longest time when I was in TSL, right, I felt like uh, my value was because of the company, mm -hmm. right. not so much about my own personal value. It made me realize, actually, you are, I have a lot of like imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm never good enough, never good enough. But then when I meet people who are actually affirming the fact that I actually can do stuff, it really made me real realize, well, actually, uh, have I been in a company for so long that I don't realize that I can do more outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I felt like I was very stagnant. Uh. In January of 2023, I made the decision that I wanted to leave. I did tell Brian and at that point my direct supervisor uh, that I was going to leave la, in mm. six months. So right. I was very oh. nice. I gave them a very mm. fair warning because at that point I, I was also like an HOD level. If mm. I were to just leave, mm. uh, it will have to be thrown away to someone else. Uh. So I wanted to be responsible enough to give uh, the next person in line uh, adequate training uh, to be able to take over the role. Uh. But yeah, long story short, the person who took over me also left. So. Oh. <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> actually, see, you look at me, but six months, no <laughs> use. <laughs> no <laughs> use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Wait, I guess it's so, like that, lah. So since it's you're, like it's quite fresh, right, mm. leaving the company, did it feel scary immediately after, like the next day? when you are like no longer uh, an employee? I think because like it was six months for me, that six months was also used for me for me to uh, plan what I was going to do, yeah, right? Yeah. That's where I got like very hungry. I went to reach out to a lot of people on LinkedIn yeah. to see like if there are any mm. opportunities uh, and then put out put out a notice like, that I was going to leave. La. And actually very fortunate enough to have a lot of people reach out to me and say like, hey, I really want you to help me do this, then mm. that. So uh, I'm very fortunate to have these kind of contexts. Mm. Uh, so you kind of just wrote into the next kinda, kind of like sta stage of life. Kind of. It was very, I would say, again, for me, uh, I don't know why, uh, have I been like accumulating so much good karma in my life that timing <laughs> is always so good for me. Right, right, right. Uh, because immediately when I left, right, I landed another YouTube channel show mm, yeah. that really lined up. Uh, I was lining up a lot of different other projects as well. So that kind of, mm. you know, gave me the assurance that I'm not going to die. La. For the rest of you, right, I mean, especially maybe John Paul, like after taking a year off, uh -huh. Was it difficult to get back into that rhythm of like a job search? No. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so immediately after I left TSL, I did think of like what other opportunities do I want to explore before I decide, okay, I'm going to take a year off. So I went to reach out to companies that I knew I would be interested in and companies that I knew I had something to offer to. And then I go and speak with these like, like bosses or whoever they are. La. Both ways, we either decided it wasn't a good fit or it wasn't the right time or whatever. So then I decided to take a year off. Mm. And then when Circuit Breaker hit, one of those people that I contacted back then and had coffee with reached out to me. And mm. that's why I'm here now. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. 
wow. Wow, not bad. Mine was damn difficult. Because eh? I'm... I'm not very good at selling myself as in at an interview. Mm. And yeah, like, yeah, I struggle it. with the resume thing because <laughs> I always do like those like very creative resume, a lot of pictures, right? Mm. But then people want like the boring, boring kind like, you know? Oh. So like when I decided to get a job, right? I like had a good like six months of like, just trying interview after interview. Oh, you got done, right? Don't have lah. <laughs> That's why you never get in. <laughs> That's why. No, you know, okay, I learned this also because I was prepping for the episode, right? Actually, a lot of resumes get rejected because they put picture. Mm-hmm. So a lot of like bigger companies also, right? They use this applicant tracking system, which is called uh, ATS. Oh, yeah. And then, right, because they pick up keywords in your resume. So if you're putting random pictures and all that, right, they actually deem that as not a very suitable one. And actually about 75% of resumes get rejected because of... Uh, the they don't have the right keywords. This is a good mm. time to also mention that E2I has a resume builder. What's that? So essentially, they help you like build and format your resumes oh. to optimize for this ATS oh. to identify a good resume. Wow. Chris is going for interview. Huh? <laughs> I like going for interview. As in, you told me before <laughs> you think interviewing is oh, fun. Yeah. I feel that even if you are comfortable in a job, you should be actively, not actively maybe, but passively looking for jobs elsewhere. Mm. Because firstly, that gives you an idea of your market value. It also gives you an idea of whether or not you really want to be there. A lot of people are in their jobs because it's the easy way out. Mm. Because they, they, don't, they simply don't know what else is out there. Mm. But if you get offered a position, you get your market value, whether or not it's, if it's higher than what you have here, then it is leverage if you want to negotiate for, for a raise. Yep. If it's lower, then you know that you are having a good deal here. The other thing also is that if you are looking for a job because you have to, you usually have a lot less bargaining power. Yeah. Mm. And you're desperate. The best time to look for a job is when you don't need to. Mm. Well, I find it so interesting that you're saying this because it's making me look at, I mean, you can call it a job, you can call it work, you can call it career, right? But it's such a big core part of a a person's life, right? Mm. Uh, Identity also. Yeah. And you're making me look at it the same way I would look at other aspects of my life, like a relationship, right? You need to develop these technical skills and apply these, like, Huh? That means you like you basically have looking for the next know, relationship. You have a good no, friend that you but you're know. consciously applying a method or right. a, a strategy or technique yeah. to make yourself be be actively aware that this is the best thing for you and you're taking care of it. Yeah. Hmm? Rather example, than example. So that means when you're in a relationship, <laughs> you, go to the, you go to the club, then you look. <laughs> Am I attracted to anyone? <laughs> they have their no. <laughs> my girlfriend is best. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, if I'm tempted... Hot. No, it's the Editor, wrong please cut this part off, please. <laughs> <laughs> so before the episode filming, we also got you to submit some questions that we could ask the E2I career coaches for some <laughs> advice about, right? And I mean, I picked out some of like the insightful answers that hopefully can also be of use to our viewers who are thinking about a job switch or thinking about upskilling. Joyce, the question that she asked, for someone who might want to move to a new industry, what are some transferable skills you can bring along to any organisation? And the answer from Vivian, hello Vivian, who is from our previous hello. episode as well. Vivian did come up with a top list. Oh, okay. So there are three main areas. One is critical thinking. The second one is interaction with others. And the third is staying relevant. I mean, oh, they're all are skills. soft skills. Yeah, see, something that she did mention in our previous episode is also right. A lot of times people go to career coaches and then they don't realise that what they can actually do are considered strengths. And then so that's what the career coach then helps you to do, oh. like, to work through the identify strengths or identify skill gaps, right? And then after that, help you build on that and then like go through an interview. I mean, it's free, so you can call them up. <laughs> the question that Fauzi submitted, actually, we did touch on also. So how yeah. do you know when it's time to move on from a job and explore other opportunities? And I think something that most of you all did mention was feeling burnt, very burnt out. This other coach, Coach Eric, did say, you're going to feel like you're dragging your feet to work every day, lah. And then it could be a case where you feel like your career progression is going nowhere. But then when you're considering another job, right, you ask like, like, where do you start? Ask yourself, do I know what I'm good at? What I want as a job? What I need to be good at? And how to get there? So if your answer is no, then perhaps you, I mean, you can also seek help from a career coach to help you identify these. And then if your answer is yes, then it can help you to map your next steps forward. Mm. Yeah. So I thought that was quite interesting. Mm. Lastly, Chris asked an uh, interesting question. He talked about the Tang Ping life. It's an anti-hustle culture kind of uh, uh, belief. Wow, where sure. they where? They have no China. 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 Yeah. Okay. So they do, they have no desire to climb the career ladder mm. and they just want to do like the bare minimum to coast through my role. Tang Ping is life flat. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh. okay. It's like planking. Oh, Tang Ping. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's not like tang ping like oh. and the army. army. Yeah, yeah, I said quite the opposite. <laughs> so, life, like. so he wanted to ask the career coach like, what advice would you give to someone who wants that? Because in our current, oh. I mean, when you go and interview, right? Then people try to ask you what is your five year plan, what is all that. Then you wanna say like, oh, I don't want, I just wanna stay in like the base level. <laughs> cannot be, right? You know? It's quite Cause cause common now. Yeah, I was gonna say that it's very common now. It's a very very common thing now. Yeah, because social media keeps telling us, oh, just do what you're paid paid to do. Yeah, yeah, Don't do more. Don't do more. But nobody, nobody likes it when they're being served by somebody who's doing what they're paid to do only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It is terrible. But it's the Tang Ping person wouldn't even go to a career coach, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah which is, which is why I, which is why I asked the question. True. Yeah, so mm. just click out whatever Chris said and then uh, comments attack. <laughs> 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 yeah, so this coach's question was actually that like, a lot of people who feel like they want to live the Tang Ping life, right, don't realise that they actually still need to find the right job fit. So you will find yourself very miserable, right? Even if you're doing the bare minimum in a job that is totally not aligned with your values and your working pace. Bit testing. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> water slide testing also exists. Mm, yeah. So, you may not want to climb the corporate ladder, but coach says you do owe it to yourself to find out what you enjoy doing and are competent in. Then you can go and look for a suitable organisation or career path. Actually, I want to build on the last part. Mm. Because I think when you talk about like career switches, right? People always think about what are the most lucrative industries mm. to, to switch to, mm. what's popular right now and all that, right? But then if you don't really stop to ask like, what is unique about your needs and wants, then you are going to be ushered in a direction with immense competition. Mm. Because there's going to be like so many other people who is thinking the same thing, go for tech go mm. for digitalization. Mm. Then it becomes very tiring because the process of leaving a job and starting a new one, right, is actually very, very taxing. Right. And sometimes if you can afford it, having some time and space to recalibrate yourself and figure out the direction, right, it will make so much more sense rather than like you keep joining and leaving and joining yeah. and leaving is exhausting. The, prob the problem is that they're not doing what they want. They're doing what society tells them they want. Mm. Mm. And right. if you don't know what you want, people are quite eager to tell you yeah. what you want. So then wow. what does what does figuring out what you want and what does recalibration look like? There's a question I ask my friends. Uh, two, two different kind of questions. The first is if every job that you did paid the same amount of money, doesn't matter if it's $1,500 mm. or $10,000, what would you do? Mm. Would you be an administrator somewhere? Would you want to work at Disney, would you, what, what would you do? Would it be in Singapore? Would it be overseas? What would you do? And then work towards that. The second way to do it is to ask yourself, what do you do for fun that people think is hard? I have friends who watch football and they immediately like see tactics. They, they see tactics and they can understand and explain to people. I can't do that. They can find a way to do what they really want to do and then find a way to monetize that. Now everything can be monetized. Mm. It is how you do it, how you find a way, your own specific special way to do it. Mm. Can I add a third question? I think the third question might be, what's something that when you do it right, like you lose sense of time, uh. mm. not just on the 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm. way, but like even weeks, months and years, right? What's something that doesn't make you count down to Friday and have the Sunday scaries? Mm. What's something that doesn't make you look at the clock when it's 4 p.m. then you're like, oh shit, I still got two more hours, <laughs> you know? And like make you like <laughs> defer all your fun activities to the end of the week. Mm. Yeah. I wanted so, to say like off the top of my head, it's like play game, but play game useless. But in fact, play game not useless in our current day and age. So I guess crazy. like all these questions, you have to find the sort of intersection. Mm. Like maybe not just what you're fun that is hard for other people, but what you're good at Mm. Even if you don't really find that fun, it might be a stepping stone yeah. in some mm. way or so. Looking back, right, what uh. is maybe something you wish you knew before you left your previous job role when you were considering <laughs> a job switch? Do it! The first time round. Do it. Why? Yeah. Because you can always go back. You can uh. change environment and then find yourself. Like Your exposure to un things that are uncomfortable and things that are different will, sh will be the best reflection of, will be the best mirror to show you who you are, what you need and what you don't need. But if you just stay in the same place, then you're stuck in the same cycle. John, I, th I think you're right, but you're also very resilient. I think a lot of people are not as resilient. As <laughs> Stop being lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, it's true. I feel like a lot of people, they will do that and then they will give up after a while. Mm. Right, right. And also this is provided that you know you can go back to that. Yeah. Mm. To go back to whatever is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So the, the advice is to go look for the e 2 i person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not a career coach put down here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do see something about cutting your losses. Like maybe the first time you feel it, right? Actually, it sounds like a lot of the people who have left, 
They started thinking about it. They started <laughs> ideating <laughs> <laughs> about living like for a really, really long time. Yeah, like eight years. Before. <laughs> 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 so tight, right? Now. <laughs> yeah, like, and during this time, right, if you see that you are just withering away, mm. like at one point when I looked at my resume, I realized that. Actually, in the last year, I have nothing to add. I cannot mm. add another bullet yeah, point yeah. because I've just been doing the same thing. Mm. So that was quite the wake-up call. La. So even if you're not looking for a job, right, I think it's a good practice to regularly update your resume. Also because like I read somewhere that it helps you with your imposter syndrome also. Right. Because oh. you are like catching your mm. past self up with what you can do now. Right. Mm. So it is quite a good practice to, to take stock of like whether mm. it's time to bounce. A lot of it has to do with feeling and that mm. gut feeling that all of you have, right? That tells you whether like, may, wait, is it time to quit? You question it. It's a gut feeling that you sense. Or even like if you want to, for example, like Joyce was talking about going to a, a, into a different industry and then you have to go and find that for yourself. It, it feels right, right? Then you go and pursue it and see what happens, right? Like I think people need to trust that a little bit more. Yeah. Mm. Okay, lah, cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, actually, like, I don't know how... I'm just thinking like with all the news of the layoffs, right? Mm. Can they really be empowered to like just up and go and cut their losses and follow their gut feeling, mm. you know? Mm. Like it would be quite scary, I, w- I imagine, like to do it. Therefore, a career this coach year. can help you. Because we actually we actually asked uh, Vivian whether or not she feels like we are really going into like a job recession. Yeah. Mm. And then she said that actually like, I mean, what you see in the news is what is big news. Yeah. And there are actually a lot of sectors that might not be laying off. And then so they are able to do this job matching for you because they've also partnered with a lot of companies like okay. local ones and all that. Then they help you mm, see like where is the mm. gap. Lo? Oh. And then join. Let's say uh, I'm just curious. Uh, I want to talk to a career coach, see if they can match me somewhere. But actually I don't want, but just more curious. Can I not? <laughs> I what do you like mean? Like, I'm curious to see like what's my market value. You know what I mean? This got this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can yeah, because they, free, they not only help you find job, oh. they also help ah. you upskill. Wait, is it free? It's free. It's free. John, you're going to do? You never. He's it's like more yeah. appealed by the fact that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I thought this whole thing must pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's not really, why everybody not doing? No, because it's just by NTUC, so it's free. <laughs> I love ah. that. I think must that. be what NTUC member. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Huh? No, no. Nibo really member. Yeah. Just look <laughs> <Nibo>. <laughs> Nibonian, uh, need Nibo. Nibonian. What is Nibo? It's like their youth. Um, youth um. You stay oh. Tanjong Pagai, you don't know. Eh? We still you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's it for today. A big thank you to Chris Fauzi and of course Joyce for joining us on the show. Hopefully, it won't be another five years before you all get to Wait, do a waiting. reunion. Okay, stop oh. with it. Oh. <laughs> And once again, this episode was brought to you by NTUC's Employment and Employability Institute, also known as E2I. They have just opened a brand new career centre at One Marina Boulevard at Raffles Place. Oh. And on top of that, they also have 25 other touch points where you can contact career coaches and get the help that you need. So do check out this QR code or this link to book an appointment if you're interested. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Breathe, Bye. Denise, breathe. <laughs> just call me Eminem. <laughs> There was like ghost stories or so like I remember yeah. we had CCTV footage. I still of, have it. Victoria. The, yeah, yeah. Vicky. The door closed by itself. Yes, then yes, she Vicky. she's she lay park, she playing game. Yeah. No, she watching Ellen. She watching, uh, she watching uh, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> then she looked around. The best then she is stressed. This is like the funniest story to me. I will never forget this because uh our toilet door, it was suddenly like it opened. Uh, and we were all shooting outside. Uh, except for her. She was watching something while playing her phone uh, like, yeah. at the point of time. So when she saw the door open, the first thing she knew to do was not to run. Change the window, bro. No, she, yeah, she changed the window. <laughs> she closed the window. She closed the window. Oh my god. Vicky, eh, I yeah, love it. That was funny. I oh.